My wife has suffered from severe mental health problems for much of her life. I won't go into all the details, but diagnosed major depression was part of it. Under those circumstances, having a child might not have been the best idea, but we just kept having kids. You know that one about the couple that was at the therapy session? The husband says to the therapist, we've talked about it and we've decided not to have children. The therapist says, but you guys already have kids, don't you? And the wife says, I know, the kids are taking it pretty hard. We felt like that. We were trying to figure out how we could just keep our family together. We were desperate and tried about anything you could think of. My wife tried a new haircut. We read just about every book anyone recommended. And of course, we went to mental health professionals. Many people think depression is easily treatable if the person just does whatever the mental health professionals say they're supposed to. But we personally experienced what many research papers now show. Pills and talk therapy hardly work at all. For citations to that article and other published science from this video, see the description box below. If your depression just seems to come back again and again despite treatment, you're in the majority. Pills for depression seem to make about half the people who take them feel at least a little better, which sounds like an okay result at first. But compare that to people taking fake pills, placebos for depression. 40% of people who take a fake antidepressant say it helped them at least a little bit. Almost all of the benefit from antidepressants is this. You believe you're doing something to fight the problem, so you convince yourself you must be doing at least a little better. As you'd expect, that kind of benefit doesn't last. This study saw 9 out of 10 patients for depression had their symptoms come back. Their symptoms would go up and down, up and down, despite treatment. Not many of these people were feeling okay over a long span of time. Antidepressants also don't provide much relief even when they seem to work. On average, the effect of an antidepressant is just a two-point improvement on a 52-point scale. For those of us who don't like math, I'll translate that. A research paper put it this way. Therapists probably wouldn't even notice the difference when diagnosing a patient because the difference is too small. In fact, it's so small, it might be entirely imaginary. As the article writers put it, the small differences may represent amplified placebo effects. That means the pill makes people feel different in at least some way, such as sleepier, so they think the pill must be working and believe in it a little more, even if it's not really doing anything. Even worse, antidepressant pills have serious side effects. They're all black box pills, meaning they have the most serious kinds of long-term side effects. Just read the warnings on your antidepressants. In the researchers' words, the real world effect of using antidepressant medications does not continue to improve patients' health-related quality of life over time. And when psychotherapy, meaning talk therapy, was evaluated against antidepressants, it was found to have a comparable efficacy to prescribed antidepressants. It seems talk therapy doesn't do all that much either, at least not over the long term. We also tried helping my wife in non-traditional ways, like through diet. We tried to eat almost entirely plants, increase omega-3s, and avoid sweets. That helped us lose weight. Look how skinny I got. But it didn't help with my wife's mental health. In fact, those were probably the worst years of her life. I remember just trying to keep my family together and my wife alive. The police and CPS got involved multiple times. My wife was hospitalized for her safety and our children's. They call me crazy. I call them crazy. Damn it, they outvoted me. She got upset and just ran away for days, weeks, and sometimes months. My dad tells a story about helping me try to find her one time when we were especially worried. He went to our family's rustic cabin in the woods. All of the lights were off, but he thought he'd check it out anyway. And it's all dark and everything, and so then I knocked on the door and nothing. He walked in, realized my wife was standing perfectly still in the shadows. Just standing there, just not saying anything. And she, I, just, I just had this premonition of it being like in a horror movie. She told him to leave. And the further I got from the cabin, the better I felt. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
that's when I noticed all the testimonials online from people who were curing themselves of their physical and mental health problems with high meat, low carb diets. I had a pretty serious health problem of my own, and it seemed like people were curing themselves of that problem as well. We decided to switch to a carnivore diet and see if that would help us. So, does science show that high meat, low carb diets are the answer? Carnivore and similar diets started catching the attention of researchers partly because of these high numbers of social media reports. In 2019, a research paper came out on the surprising percentage of online posts from people claiming to have cured their mental health problems with these kinds of diets. The article actually compared online reports of three kinds of diets rumored to cure mental health problems. Number one, vegetarian diets. Number two, high omega-3 diets. And number three, low-carb diets. According to the article, there was a much higher proportion of low-carb dieters reporting remission meaning their mental health problems went away. Not the greatest study, but it was a creative start. In 2021, researchers from Harvard published a study of 2,029 participants who'd been members of online carnivore groups. On average, they were on the carnivore diet for 14 months at the time of the study, hopefully long enough for the honeymoon period to have worn off. 96% of the 479 people with chronic mental health problems got better. That means these people had mental health problems they couldn't get rid of, and almost all those people saw improvement. In fact, half those people with chronic mental health conditions went into full remission, no more symptoms at all, after an average of 14 months on the diet. Again, this is not the best study by any means. Maybe all those results are the placebo effect. Just imagined. This wasn't even a clinical trial, just a survey. But those are huge percentage improvements on illnesses traditional medicine can't treat very well. And those improvements were in place for a long time and might be continuing. Mental health researchers became especially intrigued with high meat, low carb diets because of the impact on schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder. These are incredibly serious mental health conditions, arguably the most serious of them all. When you think of people on the street who seem to have mental health problems that seem beyond health, delusions about who they are, seeing things, hearing things, that's probably schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. I'll call them both schizophrenia through the rest of this video, though the diagnostic manual categorizes them separately. Traditional medical science can't do much about schizophrenia. It just stays the same or continues to get worse over time. Antipsychotic meds can sometimes help manage symptoms, but patients refuse them because of the side effects. The drugs make people feel drugged. One of the most famous names in this area is Chris Palmer, a Harvard professor and psychiatrist. As he put it, You have schizophrenia. That is the most heartbreaking thing. It is like saying you have terminal cancer. I'm really sorry, but you have terminal cancer. You're f***ed and there's nothing we can do for you. So if someone with schizophrenia gets better, it's essentially a miracle. Dr. Palmer's written case reports about people who have schizophrenia start eating a an Atkins diet or other keto diet and miraculously get better. Here are a pair of case reports Palmer published in 2019. Patient A is an 80-year-old female with schizophrenia since 17, hearing voices and seeing skeletons on a daily basis. Within two weeks of starting a low-carb ketogenic diet, she noted a marked reduction in her psychotic symptoms. Over the next several months, she took it upon herself to stop all of her medications. Her mood improved dramatically, and she no longer had suicidal thoughts. Her hallucinations and paranoia remitted completely. She remains on the ketogenic diet today and has lost a total of 150 pounds. She takes no medications and remains free of psychotic symptoms and has also regained her independence, no longer requiring the care of a team and no longer having a guardian. She lives independently and reports that she is happy to be alive. Patient B is a 39-year-old female with a history of depression, anxiety, hallucinations, and paranoia beginning in 1993. Her psychotic and mood symptoms persisted despite numerous medications. In 2013, she began a ketogenic diet for digestive issues. Shortly after starting the diet, she abruptly stopped the 14 medications she was taking and became severely psychotic, was hospitalized, 
but continued the ketogenic diet while she was in the hospital. She began taking one medication and continued with the ketogenic diet. Within one month, she had no psychotic symptoms for the first time since 1993, despite having tried the same medication without a response. She stopped taking the medicine over the course of the next year and has remained free of psychotic symptoms for the past five years off antipsychotic medications. She continues the ketogenic diet, and since her symptoms remitted, she has finished graduate school and now works full-time. Palmer stresses that people shouldn't just stop taking their meds. Please don't stop your meds on your own cold turkey. If you're going to try getting off meds, you should speak with your doctor. Quick changes in medication can be dangerous. But wow, these people's psychotic symptoms went away entirely, without medication. Interest in this area is growing quickly. The famous professor Jordan Peterson has a daughter who is cured of serious depression and mental illness with an extreme elimination diet of only eating meat. The founder of Roblox, one of the most popular gaming enterprises, has a son who suffered from serious mental illness. I had all these manic episodes from 2016 to 2018 and psychotic episodes. I was in the hospital multiple times. He adopted a low-carb ketogenic diet and cured himself as well. It made such a profound impression on the Roblox founder, he started a highly funded nonprofit that's spreading awareness and awarding research grants in this area. Those grants have funded studies with prestigious researchers who are also interested, such as the Mental Health Hospital at Harvard. And Stanford researchers just released the results of a small clinical trial partly funded by the Roblox founder. How these diets heal the mind more than just keto. Putting people in ketosis seems to be a large reason that these diets are so successful. For example, let's look at the clinical trial results from that Stanford study. The study involved five schizophrenics and 16 bipolar participants who were switched to a keto diet. They weren't necessarily given high meat diets. Their diets were just high in fat and very low in carbs. They could have chosen to eat very little meat if they wanted. But of course, it's much more common for keto dieters to eat quite a bit of meat. Unsurprisingly, one of the two people who dropped out of the study was a vegetarian. Plants have a lot of carbs. Almost 80%, 79% of the participants saw at least some improvement. That's a high number for people with especially serious mental health issues who are on the diet for only four months. On average, their improvement on a psychiatric rating scale was 31%. 32% even for schizophrenics. That's a big improvement for such a short time on the diet. The case studies we looked at before showed some improvement quickly, but the people in those case studies continued to improve from schizophrenia over a longer period. In the study we're talking about right now, the participants prepared their own meals. They did their own cooking, which means there wasn't a guarantee that they would adhere to the diet particularly well. In another, slightly larger study, the researchers prepared the participants' meals in a mental health hospital six of seven days of the week. The second study involved people diagnosed with major depression, schizophrenia, and bipolar disorder. They were in the hospital and on the keto diet for varying amounts of time, some as little as two weeks and up to a maximum of 240 days or eight months. All of them improved, including the 10 schizophrenic patients. The schizophrenic patients showed an average drop in their positive and negative syndrome scale scores from 91.4 down to 49.3. That's huge improvement, especially in that amount of time. And of course, being in ketosis seems to work for people with depression, not just for people with more serious kinds of mental health problems like schizophrenia. The study just mentioned included people with major depression, and all of them got at least slightly better. 43% went into clinical remission, meaning they wouldn't meet the criteria for being diagnosed anymore. Ketosis seems to be a really powerful treatment, and there's more to a low-carb, high-meat diet than just ketosis. Many people on these high-meat diets seem to be healing themselves specifically because of the high meat content. Dr. Georgia Ede explains this in her new book. For those who are unfamiliar with her work, Dr. Ede is a Harvard-trained psychiatrist and an author of one of the studies we just talked about. In her new book, she explains that meat is the true superfood. It contains all the essential things that our bodies and brains need and in more usable forms than plants. 
Many people's brains don't have all the nourishment they need because they're eating foods that aren't particularly nutritious. Processed foods have the nourishment stripped out. Everybody probably understands ramen noodles don't have much nutrition left. But beyond that, many whole plant foods just don't have the necessary nourishment. It's very difficult to get everything you need from, say, a vegan diet. Most people know vegans have to plan their meals very well, and they have to take B12 supplements. But beyond even that, plant foods have anti-nutrients that actually bind to nutrients, making them so we can't use them. For example, humans need zinc for proper mental health, and we tend to get zinc from animals instead of plants. Oysters are a great source of zinc, but if you eat them with certain plant-based foods like tortillas and black beans, your body can't really use it. Antinutrients in those plants make the zinc useless to us. When we supplement with those nutrients that we get from meat, some people's mental illnesses go away. For example, a 29-year-old woman, young woman, became withdrawn. She lost interest in life even though she had a young child to care for. Eventually, she spoke in single words instead of full sentences. When asked to take a shower, she would just sit in the bathroom. Doctors learned that she'd been following a vegan diet and was B12 deficient. So they put her on B12 injections, and she completely recovered in just a few months. A meat-heavy diet also excludes many of the foods that people might be intolerant of. And this makes perfect sense. When you remove these things from a person like that's diet, they get better. For example, a 14-year-old girl was schizophrenic. She would suddenly and unexplainably start crying and she was seeing things. It was so bad she had to be hospitalized several times. For her, wheat was the problem. When she came in contact with wheat, she'd have hallucinations within four hours. When she cut out wheat, she enjoyed a complete resolution of symptoms. Oddly, she didn't have celiac disease, which would be the normal version of people who can't handle wheat. She had a rare form of wheat intolerance. It's very difficult to know what food might be causing a mental illness, and it's almost impossible to test for within a normal medical practice, like with allergy testing. It's especially hard to pinpoint which foods are the problem because they often cause problems long after they were eaten. That's why Dr. Eads' strongest diet recommendation is a carnivore diet without dairy, eggs, or processed meat. Dairy and eggs are carnivore foods, but they cause problems for a lot of people. Similarly, processed meats contain histamines, which cause problems for some people as well. Dr. Ede recommends trying a less restrictive diet first, but if you still have problems, she recommends a diet of fresh meat only. As for how my wife's doing, I keep getting better and the last six months have been the best of my life. Thanks to my husband. Thanks to my husband? Really, she's doing better than ever. By the way, now she has her own health-related YouTube channel. Check it out. And if you're worried a meat-heavy diet would be bad for your heart, check out this video for the latest science. Thanks for watching.